Joining us now from Philadelphia is Bill Raggio. He's a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Mr. Raggio, good of you to join us, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, sir, if we can start with the last couple of lines of that report. Um, as we look at that video, and it's gruesome indeed, of the, the death of journalist James Foley, everyone is saying the perpetrator is most likely British. What do you make of that? No, I think that's absolutely right. He sounds like a Brit who uh, probably is from his family. He was from Pakistan. Perhaps he was born in South Asia and came to Britain, or um, or is the you know, or his parents have migrated over. I'm not surprised, given the large number of uh, Brits that have been reported to be fighting inside of Syria as well as Iraq. They're fighting with both the Islamic State. As well as the Islamic State rival, the Al Nusra Front, which uh, is Al Qaeda's official branch inside Syria. Yeah, you say large number. We're hearing reports that maybe around 500 British jihadists yeah. so right now are fighting in Syria and Iraq. Why so many? The, London uh, is a breeding ground for terrorist groups. There is a, they call it Londonistan. That's the the nickname, and it gets that because there are radical jihadist creatures that openly preach inside of, uh, of the city at, at known mosques, and uh, they're recruiting young British Muslims and converting them to their radical brand of, of Islam and sending them overseas. They've, they fought in, uh, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Iraq, in Syria. There's been British uh, jihadists killed in, in, and are fighting in Somalia and in other theaters, so it's no surprise that they're going to pop up in Iraq, and it doesn't shock me that they would be involved in the execution. The use of a British um, jihadist, it, it's mm. sending a message to the West that, you know, you are us, but we are you, and, and we're going, we, and we can kill you. Uh, this video, sir, is barbaric, but it's also sensational. It's been seen around the world. Is it in any way going to change U.S. policy in this part of the world, in Iraq and Syria? I don't believe it's going to change U.S. policy in Iraq. It looks like the Obama administration is going to continue with business as usual. There are six airstrikes inside Iraq. I do think that the administration really should decide what its Iraq policy is, whether it's a limited operation or whether the Islamic State is the enemy that the top officials in the departments of uh, in the Defense Department in the United States, as well as uh, John Kerry, called them evil. So we have to decide if, if the Islamic State is truly a threat to U.S. national security. Uh, and if so, then that means the U.S. needs to go in and dismantle that group. Uh, I, I think the half measures are only emboldening the Islamic State to continue mm -hmm. doing what it is currently doing. Meanwhile, there's another U.S. journalist in their hands, uh, and, and, and the perpetrators of the first murder say they'll do it again if, they, if the bombing doesn't stop, although we hear that through back channels what they want really is money. Uh, does the United States government deal with these people, or do they ignore everything? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the U.S. government did deal with them. Keep in mind, earlier this year, or actually just in June, the U.S. exchanged five top Taliban leaders who were all linked to al-Qaeda. And these are long-term Taliban leaders who were involved in the movement in the early 1990s, exchanged for one U.S. soldier. And the U.S. says they don't negotiate with terrorist groups. But they did, and they, they negotiated with the Pakani Network, a sub-branch of, of, the, of the Afghan Taliban, and this is a group that's a specially designated global terrorist group. So I, it wouldn't shock me if the U.S. did conduct negotiations to try and secure the release. It's not just one. I think there could be possibly three or even four or five American journalists. It's, it's unclear how many are in their custody. Bill Raju is at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Mr. Raju, good of you to join us. Thank you. Thank you, sir.